Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So this is going to be part two of my 2.4 gigahertz amplifier build. Now I just thought I'd go through with you what I've done so far. Now you may remember in the last video I showed these fans which were uh, which I was originally going to use. Now these are actually really good fans. These are these are from from servers, and uh, I 3D printed this little uh, bracket sort of cover here so that it would hold them all together. And the idea was I was going to put put them on the end here, because obviously there's different ways of cooling the heatsink. Anyhow, um, I, I still might try that. I'm not too sure yet. I still might try it, but. I think what I'm going to go with first of all will be will be these. Now these were about £30 off of Amazon and it actually came with a, a variable 12 volt power supply. It was 240 down to 12 volt variable so you could change the speed. Obviously um, I'm not going to worry about varying the speed. I'm just going to have a constant uh, flow. Probably just have it on max at 12 volts. Um, but uh, they come they, they come like this. There was another grill this side, but obviously I don't need a grill both sides. Uh, and that will just sit on top of the heat sink here like this. And it's almost like a perfect fit, in fact. I just need to figure out a way of keeping the fans directly mounted onto the heat sink. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. I've got a 3D printer, so I should be able to make something up for that. This is the cable that comes through. It's just... Uh, uh, this will connect inside the amp. I'm going to have to make a hole. I've got some grommets. Not too, I haven't done this yet, so I'm not sure where I'm going to fit that through the case. So that's the cooling part. So, so I've got the parts. It's just the case of just finishing and uh, putting everything back. So if we just look at this side, now this is going to be sort of the output side. I have uh, an N type uh, female here. So the N type female is going to be the output that will go off to um, well it go off to the antenna or the, the patch feed but in between this there's going to be a circulator uh, a terminated circulator in case of any issues with SWR and I'm also going to have a coupler uh, 40 minus 40 dB coupler so that I can take that off to a power sensor to monitor the power output um, I'll show you that in the next video when it's all wired up we then got two um, through terminals here, obviously plus and minus or positive and negative, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be 28 volts DC. Okay, so let's have a look at the front. Now the front hasn't really changed much. So on the front we have, this is uh, just going to be a uh, green LED, which will indicate there's 28 volts. So I know there's 28 volts coming in. Uh, over here there's a hole, there was a LED here, and I'll put that back in. I'm not too sure what color that's gonna be yet. Uh, it will be red or blue. This is gonna be an enable switch. So um, what will happen here will be the amplifier palette actually has an, an enable pin, which requires the same voltage as its input to to enable the amp or it's grounded to disable it so this will be uh, enabled and disabled um, down will be to ground and that will put the and up will put the enable voltage to the amp and the led will indicate whether that's on or off input is via an n type female the same as the output i'm going to label these obviously and obviously i know that this is going to be the front so the front is always going to be uh, the input. I probably would have put SMA on the front if I had a SMA panel mount, but I didn't have one laying around, so I've gone with this. This is the next best thing, really. Uh, this socket here, which kind of looks a bit like a, a CB microphone socket, what that's going to be is inside, which I'll show you now, I've got a, a temperature sensor which is bolted through into the heatsink, and this is going to be the data coming out of uh, here. Actually, it's gonna be the supply voltage, five volt supply voltage in for the temperature sensor. And then the data, one wire data line will go back out to my main QA100 transceiver. So let's have take a look inside and we can see what I've done here now. First thing is, is the 
input and output RF connectors have been terminated or made up with these short runs of SM14150R. Uh, it's rigid cable um, and it's extremely high temperature and low loss, which is exactly what we need, especially when we're dealing with the kind of power that we're looking at uh, on that this amplifier can, can uh, handle. Uh, that's for both the input and the output. Uh, these are quite nice to, to work with actually, this cable. It's very easy, in fact I didn't actually record me making the connectors but it's, it is very easy to work with, um, which is quite nice. And as I said, it's, uh, it's the same for the, for the input as well. So the input comes in on this side. Uh, the temperature sensor, uh, which is going through the panel and into the heatsink is here. That's uh, bolted in, and this then will be wired up to this terminal here. So I just need to cut this cable and uh, and route it nicely. Uh, we've then got the input power. This is then going to feed directly to the amplifier, and that's going to be permanently connected because, like I said before, with the enable switch that will take a positive from here to the enable uh, pin on the amplifier and uh, in fact let me get the amplifier and put it on so that's kind of where the main amplifier palette is going to sit um, and these here these pads we've got uh, the plus 28 volts ground and then an enable pin uh, the plus 28 volts and ground will be permanently wired to here through this nice thick cable and then this enable switch will be connected to the enable pin. I've also got to wire up the LEDs so this uh, LED over here and you might see this little kind of buck converter here because I've got 28 volts coming in which will power the pallet I need to drop this to 12 volts to power the to power the fans and I've tested this for about an hour I've tested this converting 28 volts to 12 volts and running the fans and it ran absolutely fine in fact I think it drew about 200 milliamps at 28 volts to run the uh, two 12 volt fans which was which was quite nice so I will just need to make uh, a cable up solder here and come through the case with a grommet uh, and then to the fans. So as you can see, I'm pretty much almost there and quite looking forward to test this. Um, I have got a circulator with Terminator, which has been made for me. And I will talk all about that in the next video because the next video, I'm hoping it will be uh, showing you the finished amplifier uh, and then also testing it as well plugging it in and testing it live and in that video i will talk about the circulator and where i've got it from uh, in essence what it does it protects the output uh, of the amplifier uh, from a high swr if you've got a bad mismatch or bad match or if you have a mismatch i.e a bad match on the output uh, you can damage and blow the output transistors on, on these amplifiers or, or any RF amplifier that isn't protected. However, with a circulator, what it does, it uh, takes the input or the output from the amplifier and any SWR, any reflected power from a mismatched antenna will be directed straight to a 50 ohm load or a dummy load is what you could call it. And it will dissipate that reflected power into this termination rather than sending it back to the amplifier which could potentially damage it. So that's the idea and I don't really want to turn it on until I've got that. I know that my patch antenna is perfectly okay, it's the, the SWR is perfectly with, acceptable but I think that because this is quite an expensive pallet or it's a, it's a good, good, fair good price 
I don't want to damage it, especially after all the effort and hard work that's gone into building this. So there we go. Anyway, that's part two. That's where we're up to on this 2.4 gigahertz amplifier build. And if you haven't seen part one, go and watch it because I talk more about the actual palette that's being used, which is an E-Rion Power Blast 300, which the specifications state it can produce 250 watts at 2.4 gigahertz using CW which is an awful lot of power. Now, I know a lot of you have mentioned and said comments, why do you need so much power? Well, I don't, I'm not gonna use that full potential. Having lots of headroom in a power amplifier is, is perfect because what that means is that you don't have to drive that amplifier so hard, which means it will run cooler, it will last longer, and you're not gonna be using as much uh, power or electricity, etc., cetera, than, than what you would if you was running at full power. For me, I'll be using it on narrow band and wide band uh, on QO100. Um, maybe in the future, I might do some experiments on 13 centimeters, but for now, it's, that's what it's gonna be used for, mainly DATV. Um, and for that, I'm gonna be needing anything between what, 50 to 70 watts, uh, probably a lot less. Um, I use a 1.2 meter dish at the moment. I've got a 1.8 meter dish, which is still in a box, which I got from a, a friend of mine, Martin, G8KOE. And uh, uh, this summer is gonna be a project of getting it out of the box, uh, doing a bit of refurb work on it, and then and then hopefully installing it. And that's a 1.8 meter dish. And with a larger dish means you need to use less power because uh, you've got more gain on larger dishes. And that's even better for the amplifier. So running the amplifier a lot less because you're getting a lot more gain from the antenna system, then it's a, it's a win-win situation. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and it's a little bit different to my normal style. I'm using a different microphone and uh, hopefully it sounds okay. So until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.